people of Gardelegen, Germany, carried 1,100 crosses to a local barn. The crosses were for 1,100 fresh graves, the victims of Gardelegen. But these 1,100 were a small fraction of the 20 million men, women, and children murdered by the Nazis. 20 million human beings, equal to the population of 22 American states. 20 million corpses the product of 300 concentration camps all over Germany and in occupied territories. Death mills that ground out their dead until the very day Allied armies broke through their gates. Those who survived could answer the roll call of all the nations of Europe of all religious faiths, of all political beliefs, condemned by Hitler because they were anti-Nazi. And now they were free. The liberators had smashed through the barbed wire at Dachau, at Buchenwald, at Ordruf, at Belsen, at Sachsenhausen, at Ebensee, and Ravensbrück. to die. Years of imprisonment, starvation, torture, and forced labor had broken. They had been beaten down to live like animals. Far worse, for few animals had lived in the terror, hunger, and filth of these victims. People who once had been human beings, like you and me. came, survivors were taken out of dungeons where rats had been their companions and vermin their bedfellows. Despite the desperate efforts of allied doctors and medical aides, help came too late for many. Allied physicians study marks of the Nazi beast. Children and infants died the slow death of deliberate starvation. Allied leaders came to the camps soon after the troops overran. First was General Eisenhower, who visited Ordruth. The inmates demonstrate the Bach, a torture instrument with which they were well acquainted. This was just one of many torture devices of Himmler's henchmen. Military leaders were followed by church dignitaries like the Archbishop of Canterbury. And civilians of the Allied Investigation Commission came to authenticate to the world horrors that human beings found hard to believe. such as dungeons where this sort of atrocity, five with operations in each box, was routine. Everywhere was the repeated monotonous sight and stench of corpses, shriveled bodies like old bones picked over by dogs, piles and heaps like the litter of a boneyard. These are the foul, wretched remnants of human beings, human beings like you and me. Not all died slowly and horribly by starvation. Millions died quickly and horribly by burning in the furnaces of Poland. This is what is left of their agony. <laughs> 
a handful of ash to swirl into oblivion on a puff of wind. Here's the Fotokammer torture chamber in Meidenheim. It is a lasting monument to German scientific genius. Gas chambers were the principal agent of death, and their use was admirably organized. Prisoners were told to prepare themselves for a shower bath. They were even given towels to make them believe this story. But when the doors of the bathroom were closed behind them, poison gas, Zyklon, was released through the shower ducts. In Dachau, in Auschwitz, in Nordhausen, in Madenek, the German murder trust standardized the procedure of slaughter. The death gas was always the same, Zyklon. Cremation was the chief means of disposal of the great mass of bodies. Auschwitz alone had four of them going night and day, like the blast furnaces of Pittsburgh. Having been put to all this expense of murder, the Nazis were determined to make a profit. The charred remains were ground up and sold to German farmers as fertilizer. The death mills were made to pay in many ways. Thousands of garments were stripped from prisoners. Women's clothes, infant shoes, even toys and dolls. Human hair, women's hair, cut before death dulled its luster. Methodically packed, it was ready for sale to manufacturers. Every murder mill had its storage room, like this one at Buchenwald. Each contained jewelry, watches, wedding rings, heaps of eyeglasses and gold teeth, torn from the mouth of the dead. These were the instruments used to pull the teeth. In their slaughterhouse, the Nazi butchers wasted as little of the body as possible. armies approached, the Nazis often tried to rush their prisoners elsewhere. Thousands were suffocated in overcrowded freight cars. Many of the dead and the dying were flung into the water. If the Allies moved too rapidly, the Nazis attempted to kill their prisoners so that no witnesses of their crimes were left behind. In Magnet, in Ordruf, in many other camps, thousands were murdered just before liberation. This man was killed with a bed. Here's a typical German barn at Gardelegen. 1,100 human beings were herded into it and burned alive. Those who in their anguish broke out were shot as they emerged. What subhumans did these things? Here's one captured at Nuthausen. At Belsen, we caught the camp commander, Joseph Kramer, the beast of Belsen. Men or women, they were the Nazi elite, Himmler's own. Amazons, turned Nazi killers, were merciless in the use of the whip, practiced in torture and murder, deadlier than the male. Interrogation room at Hadamar, a witness testifies. The camp commander and chief physician are brought into the room. They can explain everything. 
Of course the prisoners were used as guinea pigs. Of course poison was injected into their bloodstream and they died. Here, doctor seems surprised that anyone should find anything wrong with this. The camp cemetery discloses hundreds of victims of this Nazi research in murder. This was a woman. Allied members of the War Crimes Commission opened thousands of bodies. The record of their autopsies shows the same murder system at work everywhere. Slow suffocation, starvation, poison injections, burning, shooting. Hitler's henchmen tried them all. Mauthausen tells the same story. These dead were starved or shot. Often prisoners still alive, or rather not quite dead, were thrown among the corpses. Killing methods were standardized for efficiency. In our group, shooting. In Naumbach, shooting. In Lonsberg, starvation. survived at Auschwitz. Their parents and relatives had been murdered by poison gas. Most of them have forgotten their names and have nothing left to identify them except the numbers the Nazis tattooed on their arms. Holtzen had a handful left. One of these men had his eyes gouged out by the Nazis. Hey, 
Benze's survivors were walking skeletons. Most of them couldn't even walk or crawl. Remember, if they bear heavy crosses now, 
They are the crosses of the millions crucified in Nazi death mills.